KU football close, but no cigar. They fall to Texas Tech in Lubbock over the weekend. The Chiefs get a huge win in San Diego. What that means in the division race, we'll have our Chiefs insider Griffin Hughes with us later in the show. And the Royals open up the World Series on Tuesday. Yes, the World Series, and, and Casey's hosting it. So all that and more coming up on Good Morning, Good Morning KU after the break. Happy Monday. Welcome into Good Morning KU. I'm Jackson Long. Thanks for joining us. Unbelievable times here in Kansas City area. The Royals have won the American League pennant and are set to host Game 1 of the World Series. Yes, the Fall Classic. I simply cannot believe it. Tomorrow night at 7 at Kauffman Stadium. It's been an incredible run. Let's take a look at some of the photos of the fun. After the Royals clinched a playoff berth, they beat Oakland in a very wild wild card game. That was in 12 innings. Next, they swept baseball's best record, the Angels from out west, and now they're coming off a four-game sweep of the Baltimore Orioles and are set to take on San Francisco Giants in the Fall Classic. Now, the Royals get home field advantage because the American League won the All-Star break or All-Star game back in July. So Kansas City will host the first two games, and then the series shifts to San Fran for three before coming back to KC for the final two. That's if, if necessary, of course. It'll be Aces James Shields and Madison Bumgarner squaring off tomorrow night at the K. First pitch is set for 7 p.m. Kansas football was edged out again facing the Texas Tech Red Raiders on Saturday. It was another encouraging performance from interim head coach and his team, but the result still wasn't there. Most coaches will say there are no, no moral victories in football, but a few positives can be taken from the game. As usual, Ben Heaney continues to excel at the linebacker spot. You see his stop there. He had 10 tackles. That was in the first quarter alone. He ended up with an interception and 21 stops, the most by a KU player since 1979. The Red Raiders were able to get things going offensively. Their high-powered high air attack helped tally 34 points and kept the Jayhawks out of striking distance in the fourth quarter. There you see uh, Michael Cummings go to Jim A. Mundine. In, in Cummings' second game as a starter, he had another notable performance, threw for 235 and two touchdowns. Uh, of course, that one to Mundine and Kansas Justin McKay touchdown. as well. So improvements on the field, but not in the win column. KU falls 34-21 to Texas Tech. Now it's a bye week for the team before facing off against Baylor on November 1st. Ranked matchup here in KU soccer. Kansas number nine ranked against West Virginia 16 on Sunday. And the Jayhawks fall 2-0 to the Lady Mountaineers. Now this moves uh, Kansas to a 14-3-0 record. That's 4-2 in the Big 12. Kaitlin Stroud gave up multiple goals for the first time this season. Uh, usually stingy Jayhawk defense, unable to get it done here. The next game uh, will be the last home game at Friday at 7 p.m. against Iowa State at Rock Chalk Park. KU Volleyball now. This was this Saturday here in Lawrence. The Jayhawks welcomed in TCU, and they swept them in three straight sets, 17-25. And the final two, TCU just managing 19 points. Sarah McClinton moved into the top 10 in kills in KU history. And you, there you see the Jayhawks record 15-5, and 3-3 three and three in the Big 12. Next is Saturday, Wednesday at Iowa State. Excuse me, not Saturday, Wednesday at 6 p.m. against Iowa State. So the Chiefs with a huge win, 23-20 yesterday against the San Diego Chargers, the previously 5-1 San Diego Chargers. Cairo Santos with a 48-yard field goal with 26 seconds left. Smith, 19 for 28, 221 yards and a touchdown. Charles, 95 yards on the ground and a touchdown. Rivers, 17 of 31 for only 205 yards and two touchdowns. And then an interception on the final drive to ice the game for the Chiefs. We'll bring in our Chiefs insider, Griffin Hughes. Griffin, thanks for joining us on a happy Chiefs Monday. Very happy. Good to be back. Huge win. How does the impact the divisional race for both the Chiefs and the Chargers? I loved what I saw from the Chiefs today, and I think... Impact-wise, going forward, the Chiefs have a, a, a legitimate chance to win this division now. You look at the Chargers' schedule going forward. They're playing at Denver. I don't see them coming away with that win. They're playing at Miami. Miami uh, is doing pretty well right now. They're dangerous. Might not be good, but they're dangerous. And I love where the Chiefs are at right now, at home against the Jets. Um, 
and then games still against Oakland. They're at home against St. Louis. I mean, this is a good team. I like where they're at. So the game looked a lot like last year, though, um, in that game between the Chiefs and the Chargers. Well, what did you see as similarities-wise? Similarities, Alex Smith, first off, was there to not control the game, but more to be a game changer, um, a game effector, not to control it. Jamal Charles looked great, as he did last year. The defense was fantastic, and they had two sacks. And who else but Justin Houston and Tom Bahali? That's what I love to see, those guys with the two sacks. The defense carried the team. Um, they struggled a little bit in terms of finishing it off. But earlier this season, they had similar situations where they had, you know, even Alex Smith said, we could be 4-1 and one right now uh, with the missed plays. But this time, they were able to convert, and that's what they were able to do last year. And so I really see a lot of similarities between a Chiefs team last year who was a couple plays away from beating the Colts and moving on in the playoffs. This is a similar team. Uh, you mentioned some of those games that might have slipped away. They were at Denver and, and had a chance to tie the game or maybe go ahead uh, on their last offensive play. And then, and then San Francisco two weeks ago, of course, last week was the bye week. Two weeks ago, they maybe outplayed San Francisco and could have won that game I would, as Yeah, well. I think so. Uh, all right, we're going to play a little smart or not smart here. We'll start with DeAnthony Thomas is going to be better than Dexter McCluster. Smart or not smart? Smart, definitely. Right now, McCluster obviously is a little bit better. Thomas isn't getting a lot of reps. Uh, he's only had two carries. Um, but he's still, he's been looking great. His returns have been electric. Five returns on punts for 85 yards. It, at Oregon, he was a star. As both a running back and as a returner, he runs a 4-5-40. At Oregon, I loved watching him. In everything he did, he was a game changer. Once he starts to get more reps, you'll see that he is just, he's a little faster, he's a little stronger than Dexter McCluster, and he just has that eye for the hole that I never saw McCluster have, but he can really break the hole, so it's smart. Uh, always looking for the big plays, certainly. Now, Alex Smith, and, and he, you saw this on this last uh, you know, game-winning drive here on Sunday, Alex Smith and the offense will carry this team to success this season. That would be not smart. The defense needs to be the cornerstone of, of the team. And that's how they were last year. They need to rush the quarterback first and foremost. Arrowhead is going to be, actually Arrowhead Stadium itself is going to be a big a cornerstone of the team. I think the offense needs to be there just to get the points and get off the field. But the defense is going to be the real game changer. The defense is going to be what matters. All right, and last question here. Chiefs finish ahead of the Chargers in the AFC West this year. Definitely smart. I love where the Chiefs were at. If they can continue that kind of performance that they gave last week against the Chargers, they'll definitely finish ahead. This is a team that offensively can get it done. Defensively is just fantastic. Second in the country in uh, opposing pass yards per game. That's what you like to see. The Chargers, I never quite buy it with the Chargers. Ryan Matthews is not durable enough. Rivers is getting older. He's still a stud. The defense is never, I don't buy it with the Chargers, but I do buy it with the Chiefs. Chiefs may be looking up as well as, um, I guess, the Royals too, and then KU football playing a little bit better as well. Yep. So lots of good things going for the local sports in the area. We're actually going to head to news. Uh, stay with us after this break. Good morning. I'm Lane Kofis. And I'm Jack Caldwell. This is your Monday morning news update. The bodies of at least 70 ISIS fighters have been dropped off at a hospital in the Syrian town Tel Aviv. It is unclear who dropped off the bodies, but according to CNN, it is possible that other fighters from the militant group who controls Tel Aviv did this job. The Kurdish and Iraqi forces who have been battling ISIS on the ground with the help from the United States airstrikes. They are focused on punishing or on pushing ISIS out of Kobani, a Kurdish town on the border of Syria and Turkey. Louise Tro and her family reached the end of their 21-day Ebola quarantine today. Tro was the fiancé of late Thomas Eric Duncan, who died on October 8th and was the first person in the United States to be diagnosed with Ebola. Tro, her son, and two nephews did not contract Ebola even though they were in close proximity with Duncan. After it appeared Republican Governor Sam Brownback and Senator Pat Roberts would be in danger of losing their bids for re-election, they have both pulled in almost even or even slightly ahead of Democratic and independent competitors. The poll average now shows Brownback holding a 0.3 percentage point lead over Democratic Paul Davis, while, Paul, while Roberts trails independent Greg Orman by just 1.2 percentage points. 
The Lawrence Public Library launched a new mobile app earlier this month for its collection of books and other items. The app allows users to pay fines, renew items, rate and review titles, and check on their holds. The app also lets users scroll across a queue of recently reviewed titles, browse the libraries of collections for items of availability, and make shareable list of books. The mobile app has almost 400 downloads since its debut on October 1st. The Lawrence Color Run featured a different course this year and a kaleidoscope tour theme. The kaleidoscope tour featured bubbles flying over participants when they finished and an opportunity to take a picture in a kaleidoscope mirror. The course track also changed from a continuous loop around the town to a straight line track. The runners ran from Watson Park to East 11th Street and then back to Watson Park to avoid affecting as much traffic as the previous years. The Color Run is a 5 kilometer untimed race that features powdered paint and tossed onto the runners as they go through the course. After years of planning and negotiating, Lawrence Recycles will start tomorrow to serve single family homes. Apartment complexes will soon be added to the list as well. The cost of the program is spread out to every Lawrence citizen with each paying an additional fee of $2.81 added to their city water bill. The city signed a contract with HAM, a waste transport and disposal service to ensure all recycled materials will be transported and sorted in a warehouse. Collection is every other week and the same day as the residents' trash day. Also, there is an option to sign up for notifications via email to remind people to put their recycling carts out. And that's it for today's news update. After the break, Jackson will be back to wrap up today's show. Welcome back into Good Morning KU. Here's your weather wrap up for the next couple days. It's great weather outside. It's a beautiful morning here in Lawrence, Kansas, especially if you live on top of Mount Oriad. Uh, fantastic morning, about 65 right now. Let's look at uh, tomorrow and then Wednesday for the Royals games in Kansas City. And it's about perfect baseball weather if I've ever seen it. 70 and 73 are the highs and 0% chance of rain. All sun. So the baseball gods are shining down. Beautiful sun and weather for the Royals this week. That's all for Good Morning KU. Uh, for myself and the rest of the staff, have a wonderful Monday. Thank you.